Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have this haunting call. Whales truly are some of the coolest animals on earth, and humpback whales are no exception. The males of the species are known for their songs, which last from 10 to 20 minutes and are actually pretty complex. They will repeat these songs for hours at a time, and it honestly isn't exactly known why they sing these songs at all. All the males in the group will produce the same song and it will change seasonally. The females are also able to produce noise, but for some reason, it is only the males who seem to produce these long songs. It is unclear how the whales even produce these sounds, however, because they don't actually have vocal cords. This is all super cool and interesting, but the whole reason you're here is for the sound, so let's take a listen to a more haunting track released by the humpback whale. Okay, so please tell me I'm not alone in thinking that that was the most beautifully haunting sound I've ever heard come from the sea. But also imagine being alone in the ocean, not knowing what that was, and then hearing it. Probably pretty terrifying, right? At least we're all safe here in YouTube land. In our number nine spot today, we have the vampire squid. The scientific name of these creatures directly translates into vampire squid from hell, and they get their name from their fantastic red color, their glowing eyes, and their webbing in between the arms, which appears as a sort of cloak. Well, that's where the vampire part comes from. The squid part is a little trickier. While the vampire squid shares quality with both squid and octopuses, they don't actually belong to either of these families, and they are instead in a category of their own entirely. In the past, their were more members in this same family, but the vampire squid is now the last remaining member, which is why they are often referred to as a living fossil. In our number 8 spot today, we have the whistle. This is a sound that was first recorded in 1997 by the NOAA and was the source of many mysteries for years while people speculated about what may have caused the sound. While it still isn't exactly clear, it is now believed that the sound may have come from an underwater volcano eruption. If you didn't know, underwater or submarine volcanoes are located in all oceans on our Earth, and they're extremely interesting. There are certain kinds of marine animals that only exist near these extreme environments. Many submarine volcanoes are located near the areas of tectonic plate formations, which are also known as mid-ocean ridges. There is a YouTube user called Some Canadian, and they left a comment on a video of this whistle sound that pretty much sums it up exactly. First, we'll listen to the sound played at 10 times the original speed. The comment read, quote, it could be the sound of something moving through tunnels. One, volcanic eruptions and gases. Two, something big and hungry. You choose. I think they might really be onto something there. In our number seven spot today, we have Bloop. Why are all of the weirdest ocean sounds first recorded in 1997? Bloop is another one that came from that year, and it was a loud and unusual sound that was placed as occurring several times off the southern coast of South America, and it was so loud that it could be heard over 5,000 kilometers away. At first, researchers were confused because while the sound was actually similar to known sounds of living creatures, it was just way too loud that not even the blue whale, the largest living creature, could have produced it. So what is it then? Well, as it turns out, it is in fact not the Kraken, and instead it is actually consistent with ice quakes that are generated by large icebergs as they crack and fracture. It seems like this sound going with that explanation doesn't really make sense, but hey, I'm no scientist. But here's the sound for you to judge for yourself. In our number six spot today, we have the Western Pacific Bio Twang. In 2014, researchers and scientists heard weird sounds coming from the Mariana Trench, which, for the record, seems like the worst place for there to be strange noises coming from. For years, experts couldn't pin down this sound, and it was dubbed the Western Pacific Bio Twang. And while there is now a theory that was proposed by researchers from Oregon State University, they have also said that they might be entirely wrong. First, for reference, here's a little clip of the sound I'm talking about. Okay, so if you're like me, my mind immediately went to something alien related or some sort of creature that perhaps we haven't yet discovered. I mean, this is the Mariana Trench we're talking about. The theory put forward by the Oregon State researchers was that perhaps this may be a new type of baleen whale call. Okay, that's probably the best of all of the options, but I really don't like when someone tells me the answer to a scientific mystery only to tell me that that might not actually be the answer at all. While the low part of the sound would make sense to attribute to the baleen whale, 
style, it's the end high pitched twangy part that would be incredibly unique. The wide range of frequencies in the sound are what continues to baffle those who are trying to find the source of this mysterious sound. In our number 5 spot today we have Julia. Julia is a sound that was recorded in 1999 by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or NOAA which I've already talked about today. It sounds like it could be straight out of a horror movie so considering it was a sound that came from our ocean and at first no one could tell where it had come from, it really was quite frightening. The sound has now likely been demystified as researchers are pretty positive they know the origin of it. It is now believed that this sound was caused by an iceberg running aground off Antarctica. The sound however was insanely loud. It was so loud that it could be heard over the entire equatorial pacific ocean autonomous hydrophone array. Researchers were later able to narrow down what they believe may have been the point where the sound originated, although they've never actually been able to pinpoint it exactly. Most of the time when people hear the Julia sound, they hear it sped up at 16 times the original speed, but today we are going to listen to a clip of the sound at regular speed because I think it is much more eerie this way. In our number 4 spot today we have Knock. Okay, this is one that I'll admit was not captured by a submarine, but it was still underwater and it truly is terrifying. A few years ago a beluga whale named Nock, who was unfortunately in captivity, was recorded as he swam below the water. Beluga whales have been called the canaries of the sea, and for good reason, but Nock really wanted to up the ante and instead blessed us all with this sound. <laughs> Nock had this uncanny ability to mimic the rhythm and tone of human voices and it truly is kind of frightening. It of course is also a little sad as part of this was probably because he spent most of his life being forced to listen to humans speak because he was being held in captivity. Before this recording of Nock, the voices of belugas and their sometimes human like sounds have been talked about, but Nock was the first time it was recorded and honestly, I kind of wish it hadn't been. In our number 3 spot today we have the bio duck. Since the 1960s this sound has absolutely stumped researchers who heard it. This sound was basically what the name attributed to it would suggest, it sounded like some sort of mechanical duck. For decades, researchers would hear this sound and it would often be heard and recorded again in the spring and winters. After all of these years though, it seems as though the answers to this mysterious sound are finally coming to light. In 2013, researchers attached sensors that collect acoustic data to two whales. One of those tags recorded for 18 hours and the other for 8, and the whales they were attached to were traveling with other whales in groups of 5 to 40, and they were all eating basically the entire time. Throughout this time, with the tags on the whales, there were a total of 32 calls heard, and this data is what led researchers to finally understand where the bioduck sound was coming from. As it turns out, this mysterious sound was actually the call of the mink whale. Researchers still aren't exactly clear as to what the call means to the whales, but it was a fantastic discovery that finally closed an almost 50 year old scientific mystery. In our number 2 spot today we have Upsweep. We all know how little we know about the ocean, and that also includes what kind of creatures lie in it. So while this mysterious sound, out of context probably wouldn't be that freaky, when put into this situation it becomes quite a bit more eerie. This sound is referred to as upsweep and it was caught when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory started its sound surveillance system in August of 1991. The sound is apparently more seasonal with its peaks in spring and fall, but it is unclear if the changing of seasons is responsible for this sound or if it's coming from something that lurks in the ocean and remains undiscovered. Just for reference, here's a clip of that sound played at 20 times the original speed. It is possible that this sound could be coming from underwater volcanic activity, but it is also possible that it's not, so who really knows? In our number one spot today we have an earthquake. Okay, so to add another creepy Mariana Trench sound to this list, we have one that was taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep. In fact, it was the first ever sound recording to be taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep, so it's a pretty cool scientific advancement as well as a terrifying sound. Despite the crushing pressures and the fact that there's no sunlight, the Challenger Deep is actually pretty 
noisy, and that is because of the fact that sound travels a really long way underwater, which ends up kind of turning the Challenger deep into a sort of echo chamber of oceanic sounds. So while the recording was able to pick up things like the sound of a boat almost 11 kilometers overhead and the sounds of whale calls, they were also able to pick up the sound of a magnitude 5 earthquake rumbling near Guam on July 16th, 2015. While being one of the scariest things I've ever heard, this is also one of the coolest things I've ever heard in my life too. Science really is just so cool sometimes. Starting off this countdown, we have the Solomon Island Saucer. Over the years, there have been a number of UFO sightings near the Solomon Islands. Most witnesses experience the exact same thing. They see a UFO with strange lights rise out of the ocean and fly off into the sky. These sightings are what have led to the theory that aliens have secret bases underwater. One fisherman in the area said he saw this UFO and the lights raise out of the ocean and then fly by him. He said it got so close to him that he could feel the heat on him as it passed by. Not only that, but some people who have witnessed this ended up disappearing without a trace. So like, did the aliens come for them or something or what? Are they gonna come for me now? No thank you. Just don't go to Solomon Islands, okay? In our number nine spot today, we have this marine chorus. Okay, so out of context, if I played you this sound, what would you think it is? Definitely not something underwater, right? Well, as it turns out, this sound was indeed captured under the water, and these are the sounds of fish calls. While I always expected the chorus of marine animals to sound a little more similar to the stylings of Sebastian the crab, apparently that isn't even close. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know that most fish had calls, but it turns out that our human ears just can't perceive all of the hoots, moans, barks, and chirps that take place in the vast seas. This recording actually helped scientists realize that there are fish who sing together in a chorus every day at dusk and dawn. There have now been around 800 species of fish that have been identified and confirmed to make some form of noise, and apparently some fish even engage in shouting matches in noisier parts of the ocean, which is kind of hilarious to imagine. I guess on the list of creepy noises, this one is less creepy and more just informative. Coming in at number 8, we have the Yonaguni Monument. Located in the depths of the Dragon's Triangle is this weird underwater formation which has been given the name the Yonaguni Ruins. It's a bunch of weird structures that no one knows much about. Some say they are remnants of a lost civilization. Others believe they were created by aliens and that they're part of a secret underwater alien base. Let's explore that theory. For starters, it's kind of odd that this monument is located in the Dragon's Triangle. This area is considered the Pacific's very own Bermuda Triangle. Over the years, a number of ships and planes have disappeared in broad daylight in calm waters in that area. Maybe this underwater monument has something to do with these disappearances. For example, in 1952, the Japanese government sent 31 individuals to go investigate this area. They all disappeared from that area without a trace, and their bodies and the ship were never found. Theory goes that this monument is being used by aliens in some way. Maybe it's interfering with our navigational equipment and causing these plane crashes and ship disappearances. Who knows? Coming in at number 7, we have Ivan Sanderson. In 1970, biologist Ivan Sanderson published a book titled The Invisible Residence. In this book, he talked all about UFOs or USOs, unidentified submerged objects, aka UFOs that have been spotted going into the water or rising up out of it. According to his book, on April 19, 1957, a crew member on board a Japanese fishing boat witnessed something very strange. He saw two metallic silvery objects descend from the sky and dive right down into the sea. He described them as being 10 meters long with no wings or anything. When the craft hit the water, it caused great waves and rocked their boat. This could be more proof that aliens have secret bases in the ocean. Coming in at number 6, we have the leaked UFO video. A recent leaked video from 2019 shows a UFO diving into the ocean off the coast of San Diego. 
And guess what? The Pentagon confirmed this video to be authentic. So basically, in this video, you can see a dark spherical object flying over the ocean. It was picked up by an infrared camera at night. The object flies back and forth across the screen before stopping and slowly lowering itself into the water. Apparently, this video was recorded by official Navy personnel. Take a look at it and see for yourself. Took off, spoke in it. Staying wind, top side, gust of 40. What was flash? What do you think that could be? The Pentagon has no explanation for it yet. Also, the area was then searched and no craft was ever recovered or found. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, a group of divers went out looking for treasure in the Baltic Sea. That's when they came across something... something weird. It was a 70 meter long weird object laying 300 feet below sea level. This thing has since been named the Baltic Sea Anomaly because no one knows what it is. It's just this massive steel looking structure shaped like a disc with some weird patterns on it. It gets weirder when the divers claim their equipment randomly stopped working when they got closer to the object. The thing caused a massive electrical interference there. It's believed that this thing could be part of an ancient alien spacecraft. To this day, this thing still baffles scientists. They don't know what the heck it is. In our fourth spot today, we have the underwater crop circles. Underwater crop circles don't really need an explanation. They're crop circles found underwater. They're actually quite beautiful. It's just a bunch of almost perfect circles with a design found at the bottom of the sea. Scientists have said that they are made naturally by puffer fish while on a journey to find a mate. Blah, 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 okay? It's kind of weird how perfect and detailed and intricate these circles are. You decide what you want to believe. Are they made by a fish or are they made by aliens? In our third spot today, we have the underwater Stonehenge. Turns out that there's a version of Stonehenge located right at the bottom of Lake Michigan. There are a bunch of random rock formations that scientists have been struggling to explain. But it's believed that they are thousands of years old. What makes it even weirder is that on one of these stones, they discovered they even knew of that underwater structure. Freaky, isn't it? To this day, scientists don't know for sure what this thing even is. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the pink see-through Fantasia. While the name of these guys would kind of make someone think that they're like cool and sexy, in reality, these guys are Definitely not that. The pink see-through Fantasia is a sea cucumber normally found about one and a half miles deep in the waters of the Celebus Sea, which is located in the Western Pacific. These guys were actually discovered only quite recently in 2007, but there's something about them that might either prove that they've been here for much longer, or maybe they had quite the chance to develop their survival skills somewhere else. These guys are able, when frightened, to emit a light through bioluminescence in order to scare off potential predators. This animal of course gets its name through its see-through appearance and pink color, and this is what makes their intestines completely visible to the outside world. In our ninth spot today, we have the octopi, and I want to say octopus is so bad, but I know it's not the proper plural, so we're going with octopi, whatever. Ancient astronaut theorists believe that octopi are some sort of version of an alien. Maybe they're related to aliens, so let me explain. So we all know that back in the day, tons of meteors crashed down on Earth. Well, they believe that the meteorites that crashed into the ocean from space actually contained some sort of organic material. Now, this either infected some sort of water species or allowed the material in the meteor to evolve into octopi. So really, octopi could just be composed of alien DNA. Now, to support this theory, they mentioned that both Octopi and aliens are incredibly smart. On a number of occasions, octopi have pulled pranks on humans. They also have way different genomes than squids, which they're said to be closely related to. And also, they can change colors. They're just a really weird species. So what do you think? Could octopi be descendants of aliens? 
Maybe. In our number eight spot today, we have the Leafy Sea Dragon. These are a creature that are definitely one of the coolest looking on this list. A lot of weird sea creatures tend to look absolutely horrifying, but these ones are most definitely a little easier on the eyes. These fish belong to the family that includes pipefish and seahorses, but they are the only species in their genus. The Leafy Sea Dragon is most commonly found along the southern and western coasts of Australia, and they are very obviously named from their appearance. It would seem as though these guys would use these leafy protrusions to help propel them through the water, but that is not the case, and instead they are merely used as camouflage. These sea dragons are usually quite solitary, but they also have an incredible sense of direction. It was once thought that they didn't travel very far, but it was later discovered that they actually travel several hundred miles, but use this keen sense of direction to return to the same spots, which is actually very cool. In our number 7 spot today, we have the fossil monster. Okay, so as the name would suggest, this isn't a still living creature and instead is one that has been found in a fossil. These fossils pertaining to one particular creature have only been found in one spot and they come from a time about 300 million years ago when what is now Illinois was covered in water. Found in the Maison Creek fossil beds, they have found the fossils of an animal called Tullymonstrum gregarium or simply the Tully monster. What is so unique about these fossils from this creature other than the fact that it lived 300 million years ago, which is wild is that attempts at classifying this creature have been highly controversial. Interpretations of this fossil have been likened to mollusks, arthropods, cononodonts, worms, and vertebrates. It is super weird that this creature, with fossils located in only one place from 300 million years ago, is super hard to classify because it has a bunch of different attributes that could be placed in a number of different animal classes. I'm not saying it's an alien, I'm just saying it's a little mysterious. In our number six spot today, we have the Mimic Octopus. Octopuses in general are all insane. Like I fully believe that basically all of them could be from another planet because I just don't understand how they look like that, how they're all so smart, and how they can individually use their little suckers. I don't know. They're just fascinating creatures and the Mimic Octopus is no exception. These guys are normally found in the Indo-Pacific and they get their name from their unbelievable ability to use chromatophores to blend in with their surroundings or perhaps to impersonate another marine animal. Most of the time they use this ability to defend themselves from predators, but they can also be seen using it to help them catch their prey. For example, they might appear as a crab's potential mate before they chop down on their certainly confused and surprised tasty snack. In our number 5 spot today we have the peacock mantis shrimp. I mean… Need I say more? These guys can be found in the Indian and tropical western Pacific oceans and man are they a wondrous sight. They get their peacock name from their fantastic colors, but despite how awesome these candy colored shrimp are to look at, this actually isn't what they are known best for. These guys are actually best known for their ability to quickly punch with their front two appendages and despite their tiny size, don't underestimate their power. Apparently this punch is one of the fastest movements in the entire animal kingdom. In fact, it's so fast that it causes enough power to be able to break the glass wall of an aquarium. I mean, they definitely know how to pack a punch. Luckily, they usually save this sort of thing to break open mollusks and help them get through a crab's armor. In our number four spot today, we have the colossal squid. The colossal squid is a creature that is not to be confused with the giant squid, which is similar but slightly smaller. These guys live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica. This creature lives up to its name as it reaches an average of 40 six feet in size and it weighs around 500 kilograms, with the females being the largest of the species. They also have large tentacles equipped with suckers that have little razor hooks on them to better latch onto its prey, so let's hope it's not you. Its diet mainly consists of large fish, such as the 7 foot Patagonian toothfish. It also includes small ones and sometimes they even consume their own kind. But They've also been known to try and consume larger prey, like sperm whales, who often have been seen with scars attributing to the battles they must have faced. They're colossal, they're scary, and they're ambitious. What more could you want from a sea monster? Only two specimens have ever been collected, with a second being found recently in 2014. If you ever wondered where the tales of the kraken came from, 
you now know. In our number three spot today, we have the predatory tuna kit. Okay, say what you want about any other fish on this list today, but these guys definitely look the most like aliens, and honestly, they are the epitome of deep sea weirdness. The predatory tuna kit is like the Venus flytrap of the deep sea. They start out life kind of like tadpoles, and then they swim until they find their perfect spot, either along a canyon wall or right on the sea floor. Once they found their spot, they plant themselves in place using a natural adhesive that they produce. Once planted, they will undergo a huge change, and this is where they will stay for the rest of their lives. They are super picky about where exactly they make their homes because it will be where they stay, and because they need to make sure that both the chemicals in the water in that area, as well as the temperature of the water, is just right. Unfortunately, if these guys get moved from the location they choose to make their home, they will die, so it's imperative that they're just left alone. They basically wait for food to drift on by, and like a Venus flytrap, when they get their meal, their mouths will snap shut until they're done digesting. The predatory tuna kit is a point of study in the medical world because they actually have been known to help with some more serious medical conditions, which is always an incredible thing. In our number two spot today, we have the sea pen. Okay, this thing under the sea looks a lot like a pen, right? Well, the orange sea pen is not a pen, and it's not even a sort of plant. It's actually a colony of animals that can withdraw into the soft sediment wherever it is found. So I just heard of these guys today, but it turns out they are a lot more common, and there are actually about 300 species of sea pens. To make them even more out of this world, it is said that with a little stimulation, they glow with a green sort of light. So. I don't know about you, but that's the most alien thing I've ever heard. In our number one spot today, we have the Yeti Crab. Okay, I'll be honest, these guys are on this list today because they look so incredibly strange, but they are also remarkably unique. These furry clawed crabs, yes, you heard me, they were first discovered 5,000 feet deep in the ocean near a hydrothermal vent. They were found just south of Easter Island, and when found, it was realized that they were not only in a new genus of their own, but a new family as well. Because of the deep, dark, and extreme environment that these guys live in, not much about them is known at this point in time. It is believed that they likely don't have sight, and it's also thought that they might have a sort of bacteria that resides in its furry claws, which allows it to detoxify the food that is coming from the vent. Listen, the ocean is scary, but it's also unbelievable and truly incredible.